Welcome back to Pipe Organ Stops. Today we're headed to Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas. So here we go. Cumberland Presbyterians founded Trinity University in 1869. It would move locations in Texas several times until its current campus was built in downtown San Antonio in 1952. This private, independent university enjoys quality resources and facilities thanks to a $1.1 billion endowment. It's the academic home to more than 2,500 students. Dr. David Heller is the organist and uh, professor here. He's going to get me into the chapel. There it is. It's the chapel. The 166-foot-tall Murchison Tower has become an icon to the university. The Margaret B. Parker Chapel can seat upwards of 600 people. When the famous Texas architect O'Neill Ford designed the Parker Chapel, he always intended for it to house a very large pipe organ. He left a huge space for the new instrument, with plenty of room to spare. Even with the sizable organ which occupies the space today, there's still room for expansion. Campbell Smith, the original organist at Parker Chapel, had worked previously with the well-known Texas organ builder Otto Hoffman, who was selected to build what would become his magnum opus in the Parker Chapel. Campbell Smith had an affinity for French organs, so Hoffman's intentions were to design the organ in a French historic style. Unfortunately, the limited understanding of French organ building of the time led to a design and tonal character that would more appropriately be considered American classic. When Dr. David Heller became the Parker Chapel organist in 1986, he was able to begin working together with the chaplain and the president of the university to upgrade and modernize the instrument, with the help of John Ballard, curator of the organ at the time. They began by multiplexing the organ, and adding multi-level combination action. In the 1990s, Trinity's president, Ron Calgard, raised money to endow the chapel and the organ, which would ensure that funds would be perpetually available for maintenance and renovations. Charles Kegg, who more recently has been involved in the organ's upkeep and renovations, built a new console for the instrument in 2007. A long-standing recital series at the chapel has been inviting internationally renowned organists since the organ was first built. Pierre Cochereau, the famous French organist, performed the inaugural recital in 1967. Marie Claire has been here twice. Jerry Hancock was here a number of times. He knew my predecessor. Um, when I came on board, um, the first, I started to invite the younger generation. Uh, David Higgs was the first one. Michael Ferris, Tom Trotter from England. The organ has three, um, three ranks of cavaillacole in the swell division, the voix humain, and the hautbois are cavaillacole, and then in the great division, the gamba eight. That was all pipe work that was brought over from France by Pascal Boissonnet, who was then working for John Ballard at that point. But we also have ranks from E.M. Skinner, 1925-26, the oboe in, that's the flute and flute celeste, the oboe in the positive division is Moeller, 1927, from St. John's Lutheran. That was one of the best stops, and the old Moeller that was up in the front. And we made a trade with them because the Moeller of 1983 was not working out very well, so we traded ranks or something or other. Um, the open wood 16 in the pedal, that was donated to us by Ed Swearingen, who was the second husband of Madeline Fallis. He was an aircraft manufacturer. They had a big house with a big organ, and he did some organ building. Matter of fact, the first organ at St. Luke's was by Ed Swearingen, all up in the front. And uh, he had the, the pipe work for this open wood 16, and he just gave it to us. And we put in, that was probably the hardest set of pipes we've ever had to haul up through the trap door up into the chambers because low C is, the scaling of low C is just huge. And it took about six guys to get it up, because you have to up and you have to lift it up and over the great division pipe work to get it back into the corner by the pedal division. So it was not. Um, E.M. Skinner came out of a church in the valley. They sold them the two ranks to us for $800. It was a steal. Wow. So that's not original Hoffman. 
Um, this is not original Hoffman. That was put in in the 1988 uh, rebuild of the Great Division that John Ballard wanted to have a uh, harmonic flute, and he had Manuel Rosales help him. And these are old diaphone pipes that John got somewhere and just voiced it. And when we added the gamba, this is Cavaille Cole, then we have the four classic stops of a French Grand Org. Borden 16 on the grate was the old Quintetton. Oh, okay. And we had it revoiced into a Borden. It's a very light. Nice. But adding, this is the old pedal principle from the Ruth Taylor. So now we have that foundation in the planum all the way up. Low mixture, high mixture, tertian. trumpet, the chorus reeds were replaced in 2012. Charles Kegg did these for us. So they blend in really pretty well with the entire large ensemble. On the Bombard Division, this was not original, the open diapason 8 and 4. All we had here was the Grand Furniture, the Grand Cornet, and we had the Ashamad 16, 8, and 4. That was it. So we wanted to add more foundation to the organ, so we added these are big scale. There were no chorus reeds in this division. These were added in 1988, F.J. Rogers in um, England. So now we have the whole. Uh, swell division. Uh, was completely revoiced in 2012. This is where we raised the wind pressures, brought everything up. And um, this was added. We had a Fagot 16 and 8 unit before, but we didn't like them. So Charles King built a new set for us because I like what he had done on other organs. This Fagot has a lot of fundamental in the low 16. It's got a lot of juice. It's all, it's full length miter. So if you're setting up that English swell. The oboe is Cavaillacol. That's a French oboe. Has that sort of piquant quality to it. Wahuma is Kavaya uh, Cole as well. And a little tuning issue. In the pedal division, um, these were added in 1988. <laughs> Um, this
this was added in 1987. This is the old 16 foot reed out of the Ruth Taylor organ. We didn't have a light 16 to use in Bach. Swearingen gave those pipes to us. That was an addition. That's how big that scale is. Now, we discovered that when we added that, this 32 foot board is not strong enough. So we added a 32. That is digital. That's a digital extension. No, I would not have the room for a 32 foot board up there. <laughs> but that's a digital stuff. Wow. So when we added the digital extension of the open wood, we had um, the way that des Rogers designed these systems that you could also get more stops along with it. So I added another 32-foot reed. This is the sampling of the 32-foot reed off of um, Portland, Oregon, Trinity Cathedral, the Rosales. Now that is a little more fundamental. What I've discovered is if I use these two together, that helps save the system. It gives it a little more bottom to it. This is a half length. Hmm. That's why it sounds like it does. But the chimes then are digital. Pretty good for digital chimes. Yeah. Uh, Jillian Weir was completely fooled. That 16 foot Quinton is digital. Yeah. So we did a little bit of digital augmentation simply because we had it here. Um, it was available to us, but um, I didn't go overboard. Some organs go really overboard with adding a lot of digital voices, and I didn't want to do that. Uh -huh. Time for just a little bit of sampling by way of playing.
have it. Another amazing instrument. So, until I see you next time, have fun at the console. Bye.